Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are talking about entering God's rest. And that's one thing the Lord has promised us. And He's bringing this word again today so that you will hear and respond. Remember the word of God says, The entrance of thy word gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. So the reason God will repeat his word is so that you hearing it today will receive light. Praise God. Now before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Let us release our faith. I've taught you what it means to release your faith. If you haven't heard it, go listen to the, the f- episode one of this series. I think that was on Monday. Go listen to it so that you understand what it means to release your faith. So if you're ready, join me right now and make this demand. Say, Father, I make the demand for my daily bread. It is mine and you will give it to me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Now believe that what you have said will come to pass. Believe that God will surely answer your prayer. That's what it means to release your faith. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Expect a miracle today. Expect provisions. Expect your needs being met today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, then. Now we are talking about entering God's rest. And I was telling you on Monday, I remember telling you on Monday that every truth, every main truth of scriptures, you must find its root in the Garden of Eden. Now, why the Garden of Eden? Now, that's the last place we see in a physical environment God's perfection. Yes, praise God. We see in a physical environment God's perfection. The Bible told us that God built a garden in the east of Eden and he placed the man there. Now, because say it's a garden, don't just think it's one place of fruits, you know, that kind of a thing. No, it's a system. There was a system that existed in the garden. And that system created rest for man. And you remember that God, it wasn't Adam that planted the, the, the trees that produced the fruit he was eating. No, God himself planted that garden and put man in there to dress it. Now, so man came into a garden that was already prepared for him. And his job was to watch over that garden. His job was to superintend or administrate over that garden. And because of that, God gave him certain rules and and told him certain things to do and certain things not to do. Now, that's where the instruction of the tree of knowledge of good and evil came. God told them, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is in the midst of the garden, you shall not. Now, actually, God meant you shall not freely eat. Now, because God didn't intend that they would never eat of that tree. No, the the key word there is freely. He said, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden, you should not eat it freely. Now, what's supposed to be the difference? You eat that one. Don't eat that one until I tell you to. Because you know, some people have thought about it. Like, why did God even put that tree there? Was it to tempt them? No, no, listen. Just listen. He didn't put that tree to tempt them. It was a tree. Let, let's, let's, let's go there. Oh, Genesis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. Then the Lord God took, now take note of that, the Lord God again, remember what I told you about it. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now that's the key word I said, freely, freely freely eat but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat it for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die now i want you to see something here um let's go to let's go to verse 8 Look at verse 8, chapter 2. Then the Lord planted a garden eastward of Eden, and there the man whom he had formed. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now watch this now. And out of the ground, take note, out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food out of the ground take notes out of the ground the lord god made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now all these trees grew out of the ground and take note he said they are pleasant to the sight and good for food now let's go to chapter 3 thank you lord jesus chapter 3 now this was when the serpent came and tempted eve right and and they began this conversation now i want us to jump to verse 6 verse 6 now, Satan had told them that, oh, you know, you will not really die. You know, God doesn't want you, you know, stuff like that. And um, verse 6 says, so, the, so when the woman, well, watch this. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirous, desirable to make one wise. Now, take note. There was nothing special that she saw in that tree that wasn't there before. That's why I read the other scripture in chapter 2. It says the tree was it grew from the ground, number one, it was good for food. And then number two, it was pleasant to the eyes, okay? So now that's how God made the tree. Now, the, the because they created so much mystery around the tree, of course, Adam created so much mystery around the tree. And then when, what the devil did to Eve was to simplify or bring to her senses, or bring her back to reality, that this is a normal tree, praise God. Now, that, that's what it was, it was a normal tree. So now she looked at the tree again, but before this time, she had just like, ah, leave that tree alone, that's a very special tree. Then when the devil made her pay attention, the serpent made her pay attention to the tree, and it says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, uh -huh, it was created to be good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes the bible said that's how god made it praise god yes now you see it was nothing there was nothing mysterious about the tree the only thing that was on that tree that made it special was the command that god gave concerning it and god gave that command for a purpose you see, I'll tell you this, if you've walked with God for a while, you would have noticed this in your walk with Him. No matter what God does in your life, He creates a system of obedience in everything He's doing with you. If, if you cannot find that system of obedience with God, I'll tell you the truth, you, the assignment you're doing is not from Him. You conjured it yourself or you're fooling another pattern. God's pattern is this way. There must be in it a system 
of obedience. So if you look at all the command God gave to the children of Israel, you will find a system of obedience. You will find God tell you, on so so and so day, you must all gather. There's a reason for that. Not because he wants to see people. No, there is a reason for that. He wants to keep track of them that their obedience is still in place. Now that's how God does this thing. So now it's the same thing he did in the Garden of Eden. That's why he put an instruction on this tree. So you don't eat this tree until I tell you to know that's actually what God said to them. Say, Pastor, why do you know? By the Holy Spirit, of course. That's how we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Some things that are not clear, we go before him and say, Lord, but why would God put that tree? And wait on him until he gives you the answer. Praise God. So now I'm speaking to you, telling you that he has given me that answer. Now, if you don't agree with it, it's not a problem. You go to him and let him give you an answer that is different from what I've just told you. Praise God. But I know if you go to him, he'll tell you, but, but you've already heard, so what are you looking for again? <laughs> Praise God. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't go. I'm not discouraging you. From We should always ask questions. And if Jesus said he would teach us all things, then we'll take advantage of his teaching ministry. Praise God. Hey, we're talking about entering into his rest. So now you see that in this place of rest, which is the Garden of Eden, there was a system of obedience that God created for them. And so he told them that that tree, you don't eat of it freely. So how are we supposed to eat it? Now that's the system of obedience. When the tree was ripe, they were supposed to gather it because God would not create, create wastage. You know that, right? Now, every other tree, they can go plug it and eat and do whatever they want to do with it. But this tree, as they tend it and they look at it, when it's ripe, they are supposed to go before the Lord and say, Lord, what do we do with that tree now that it is ripe? Because it's going to mess this whole place up. Then God will now give them the instruction. That, that's why we say the titan principle started from the Garden of Eden. Now, when we, have, when we make that statement, this is what we're referring to. And what is it? The obedient system in your finances is the same obedient system that God created in the Garden of Eden. So you may freely spend all your money, but the 10% belongs to the Lord. Now, what does that mean? You don't spend it. You go to God with it. So they, Moses said, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. What does this say? What does this, why did he say that? Creating the obedient system. How do you remember the Lord your God? It's not, oh, I remember God. Oh, he's the one that gave me this money. No, sir. It is by tithing. So you, you, you can freely spend all your money, but see that 10%, you must honor the Lord with it. And you must go now. It is an avenue for you to approach Him. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, that's the same system we find working in the Garden of Eden. So they were to go before the Lord and say, Lord, now remember they were in their rests. Adam and Eve, they were in rest. God had made everything for them. And they came into a world of, of, of prepared, everything was just prepared for them. And you know the story. Now she looked at these in a different light and she took it and ate of that tree. And, and she gave to her husband, he ate also. And you know the story, God showed up, where are you guys? Oh, we hear, heard your voice and we hid ourselves because we were naked. And God said, who told you we were naked? He, God didn't say, who showed you you're naked? He said, who told you you're naked? And you know why he asked them, who told you? Because they were naked and they knew they were naked, but they were not ashamed. Suddenly, they now became ashamed because they were naked. So what happened? What happened was simply, you know, people thought, after they ate the tree, their eyes opened. Now, that's what the devil told them. Look at it. Look at it. Mm. Now, 
Verse 4, chapter 3, Genesis. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, let me tell you what, one funny thing about this tree. Even Satan, the devil, did not really know what this tree was all about. He just knew God gave them a command and he was curious about that command. He was curious about what's special about this tree. So he looked at it also and realized it was a normal tree. So why is this tree special? What mystery surrounds this tree? He wanted to know because it's new. <laughs> it was new. He hadn't seen. Now he spent. Okay, okay. Lucifer had spent time in the Garden of Eden. Understand this. Now that's one thing about him. He feels he knows God so much. He feels he knows God more than every one of us. That's what Lucifer thinks. So when God began his adventure with man, and he began to give him some instructions. And, and Lucifer was wondering, so what's the meaning of this one? Because he felt there's nothing God's going to tell man that I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. But then man, God began to say, you can eat of this tree. But this one, now, Satan was curious. What's in this tree? I need to know. He cannot go and ask God what's in this tree. So the best way to find out for him was to poke man to open up that tree. You understand what I'm saying? So now he can now... So he didn't tempt Adam and Eve just because he wanted to tempt them. He himself was curious to know. So he was the one that brought this lie that, look, if you eat this tree, you will know the difference between good and evil. But that's a lie because there is no fruit, there is no fruit that you will eat ever that is going to create a magic in your life. <laughs> no, sir. No, that's not the system of God. The system of God is words. Are you following me? So it is not the fruit that you eat that will make you wise, that will make you know God. No. It is the obedience that you keep because the knowledge of God. Now, now remember, <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. My time is up. Praise God. Ah, I'm, I'm, we are just at the door of entering into something. And I just realized if we step into it, it will not be right to end it at the door. Praise God. So tomorrow we're going to go into this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will surely enter into your rest you will surely enter into your rest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a beautiful day today. God bless you. Bye.